I recognize the gentlelady from Georgia, Ms. McBeth. Thank you so much, Mr. Chair, and good morning, Administrator Milgram. Good morning. I have read your testimony. Thank you for coming before the Judiciary um, Committee to testify, and we do appreciate your time and, and your willingness to share uh, today with us all this information. Administrator Milgram, you know as well as I do that the Drug Enforcement Administration plays an essential role in protecting our neighborhoods from dangerous substances. And the men and women of this agency do work diligently, as you've been explaining to us today, to disrupt the networks of the drug cartels and to bring justice to those that are trafficking these harmful substances to our communities. I am not an attorney on this committee. I am not an attorney on judiciary, judiciary, but I am a mother. And so I agree that these efforts that you're putting forth and others are truly essential. When raising my son Jordan, um, I made sure to surround him with friends and family who I knew were going to really provide a loving and supportive environment uh, for him. And there are countless mothers like me um, that are still doing their part. They're doing the same thing. But the unfortunate reality is that opioids, uh, like fentanyl, continue to seep uh, into our communities and, and into our homes and into the bodies of those that we love and care for. Countless mothers like me, like myself, are paralyzed by the threat of these substances and the threats that they pose to our children and our loved ones' well-being. Can you please illustrate the supply chain of fentanyl-related sub substances and how they are reaching American neighborhoods? I really would like for that to be clarified um, from you know, but definitely from initial manufacturers to the dealers and, you know, that sell these deadly products. Please clarify that for us. Uh, thank you, Congresswoman. I appreciate the opportunity to talk about the critically important substance of, of DEA's work. Um, and I would share your concern as a mother. Um, I will tell you, we have the opportunity to meet with families all the time who have lost loved ones, who are out in communities trying to raise public awareness. Uh, we now have the faces of more than 5,000 Americans who've lost uh, whose lives were lost to drug poisoning that line the walls of DEA headquarters, and I routinely walk past those faces. I see the faces of America, and there are often moms and dads and brothers and sisters who are there. So I could not agree more of how vital this is. The supply chain that we see right now begins in China with precursor chemical companies that are producing chemicals that are essentially the building blocks of fentanyl and also methamphetamine. Those chemicals are then being shipped to Mexico or to other locations in Latin America and then brought into Mexico, where they are being cooked, essentially using recipes to make fentanyl. So the vast majority of fentanyl that is coming into the United States is being mass produced in Mexico. First, it is produced as powder, and then it is pressed into pills. Some of it does come across the border as powder. Some of it comes across the border as pills. Most of those pills are made to look like the small blue oxycodone 30 milligrams that are coming into the United States. As I said earlier, we know from the, our investigative work and the evidence we have in cases that the cartels are pushing the fentanyl across the border through every way. Once it's in the U.S., there are a series of hubs that the cartels generally use to bring the fentanyl in, and it's coming in polydrug, meaning they're bringing in fentanyl with meth, with cocaine, often with heroin, right. and then it goes into our communities. Am I correct in, in stating, because I want to clarify this for the record, that 90 percent of fentanyl from Mexico seized in the United States was discovered at legal entry points or interior vehicle checkpoints not illegal crossing routes, am I correct? I think that, that, CB, that CBP statistic is of all the fentanyl that has been seized at the border across the United States, DEA seizes, uh, because we seize and we're, we're working in communities across the country, we seize across the United States. So I wouldn't say that 90% of DEA seizures is at the border, but I, I've read that same piece of information. That's the Customs Border Patrol information of the fentanyl crossing the southwest border. They've reported that 90% is coming through the ports. Okay. Thank you. I have one more question for you. Many of my colleagues on the other side um, are attempting to use fentanyl crisis as a way to demonize immigrants. And so these are some of the same families that we live among every single day. Uh, their children are in our classrooms, and as a representative to one of the most diverse districts in this nation, 
um, you know, can you please clarify to the committee who exactly traffics these products into our communities? So I, I have also read the CBP reporting on this, that it is mostly uh, predominantly Americans crossing the border with fentanyl. Um, what we see across the United States is uh, we see cartel members, obviously, who are working across the United States, facilitators and associates, but then the last mile individuals are people in, in communities across the United States, often Americans, um, sometimes others. Thank you, Maya. I'm out of time. Gentlelady's time has expired.